Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be having a look through another selection of vintage pan paperbacks. These are more pan giants from X350 up to about X500. And this includes another really interesting batch of books. Some more James Bond. I've got a nice uh, You Only Live Twice show card to show you, as well as some other really interesting movie ties and the usual mix of pan's classic jackets. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Right then, so we start with this one, which is X352. This is Jim Clark at the wheel. So Jim Clark was the uh, a great racing driver in his day. And uh, there's a couple of books uh, that he wrote. And this is the Pan one, uh, published in 1965. Like uh, an early Lewis Hamilton. Um, but yeah, very su successful racing driver. Um, X354, The Gunts, Frank Norman. I guess there he is, author of Things Ain't What They Used To Be. Um, drinking and smoking. He's an ex-jailbird turned author and playwright. Hmm. Frank Norman. 363 is a John Creasy. And Inspector West, Inspector West at home. And I noticed when I was um, pulling these out that some of them are not in the greatest of conditions because these later X books are not ones that I've really sort of focused on trying to collect. Um, so these are just ones that have been found out in the wild pretty much, not really bought from secondhand bookshops or from, uh, you know, or from dealers. They've been, they've been just bought boot sales and charity shops. So they're not all in the greatest of shape, but, um, I'm more than happy just to have them to fill to fill the 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 gap in the uh, in the collection there. So this is X three six seven. So I reckon eventually they'll get upgraded. I'm trying to finish the pan, uh, the great pans at the moment. Um, so this is never go to see John Winton. Three eight seven, and some of these aren't. We're in the period now where the real classic pan artists are not being used anymore. And uh, we're getting a real mishmash of people or even sort of partly photographic uh, covers. Um, Failsafe. This is a Henry Fonda movie. X388. He plays the president. And these are, some of these are really old and uh, they could use going through the old cleaning treatment, to be honest. Um, Eric Burdick, I'm coming, Virginia. Not for the squeamish, it says. So these are all mid-1960s, mid so they're still a fair old vintage, these, 55 years old, these books. Uh, another John Creasy. Can't spot the uh, artist again on that one. Policeman's Dread. He was some prolific author, wasn't he? In fact, look, Britain's most prolific and consistently popular writer of top-class crime novels. Over 25 million copies of his books have been sold. He is super prolific. John Creasy. This is X393, Boldness Be My Friend. Um, a slightly different cover design, this one, and um, I think this is a reissue of one of their earlier ones, one of the, the great true stories of World War II, so I'm pretty sure this was a... Uh, a reprint in this edition. Let's have a little look. Yeah, so this is the 1965 printing. Um, the earlier one came out as a number pan, uh, which we've already covered in the uh, in these videos. Do you like my Second World War escapes? Um, X395 then is the film tie-in to Von Ryan's Express, which was that famous uh, Frank Sinatra movie. Starring Frank Sinatra and Trevor Howard. Yeah, one of his most um, most famous films, wasn't he, Sinatra? Really underrated actor. Um, a lot of people rave about him. I certainly don't mind sort of his greatest hits music-wise. Um, I think he is a good actor. Um, he was great in, what was it, The Man with the Golden Arm and um, uh, Lady in Cement. Do you remember that trilogy? He was good in that. X396 then. Another movie tie-in, Where the Spies Are. David Niven as Dr. Jason Love. Val Guest, production. And Pan did the, uh, 
quite a few movie ties, didn't they, over the years? Quite nice. X397. All things new. This is a pan original. A pan special illustrated. Hmm. So is that like a... I oh, know it was published first in hardback, but it's, it's done as a pan special, something a little bit more unusual, I guess. Quite a nice copy of that one. X399 is a Neville shoot. Seen a few of those, haven't we, recently? Pied Piper. This is a wartime related, uh, yeah, France in the summer of 1940. So a uh, uh, very turbulent time in France's history. The Germans had just... Uh, Invaded. Uh, X401 is the Sitterford Mystery. Now this looks like a cover by Francis Phillips, but I can't see his signature anywhere, but very, very reminiscent with the, the different elements. So I'm sure that that is um, uh, a W. Francis Phillips um, cover. Absolutely certain of it, but um, yeah, you can't quite see all the, you can't quite see the signature on that one for that Christy. X404 then is Morris West, the second victory. Also set during the war, that one. X405, the case against Satan. Ray Russell, oval cover there. The truly startling novel of a priest's struggle with the devil in the body of a teenage girl. So it's a bit like a the Exorcist, isn't it? Basically. But this came out before William Peter Blatty's book. So this is 1965 in Pan, 62 in Hardback. Wonder if uh, William Peter Blatty got the idea. 409, X 409, The Foragers, Ben Haas. Virginia, 1964, the American Civil War is in its fourth year. And for a Confederate captain, there comes a bitter moment of truth. Oh dear, I think that's one for the ladies. By the look of it, X409. X412, Alice, Evie Cunningham. This is another one where they've um, used a bit of a, the, the key there. In fact, there's two keys with a little photo in the main body of the key. Yes, I think it's a bit of a cop-out, you know. Don't you? Such a shame that the uh, the trend for beautiful cover artwork has disappeared at this point. Here's another one, and as you know, um, I don't really like these are the these are the the best of the American crime fiction because they come in these little handcuffs with a tiny little picture poking through there like a little vignette. Yeah, not my favourite cover design. These Hillary Wall. That's four one four. Four one five is the Tiger in the Bed. Max Cato, powerful novel by the author of The Devil at Four O'Clock. It's quite a nice, uh, quite a nice square copy of that one. Now, this next one, I actually, because I've got my James Bond and Fleming books separately, I forgot to include this one in the last video. So, this is X three three two which is Thrilling Cities Part 1. And this is X418, which is Thrilling Cities Part 2. So they do sort of go side by side. Now, I have got um, a pan cardboard show card for these, and um, for these two books, but um, it's sort of, it's attached um, to the side of my James Bond bookcase. So I'll pop a picture of that in there now. Um, so I haven't got that one. I have, however, got a show card for um, You Only Live Twice. But I thought I'd show you, is there a bit of a Fleming related? Uh, well, it's basically his travel books they did. So uh, quite nice and, and quite scarce in nice condition as well, to be honest, those. So uh, yeah, quite nice, those uh, sort of James Bond related. X419 is another Neville shoot, an old, Captivity. And then we've got a bit of sci-fi. Clifford D. Simak. 
they walk like men. Nice uh, pan sci-fi. I do like their uh, sci-fi from this period. I think it's very, very good. Mid-60s sci-fi was very popular at this point. And just one more by Simac at that time. Time is the simplest thing. Good stuff. So this one's quite scarce and I've only ever had the one copy of it. And I would like to get one, which is a bit better, Nick. But it's All Night at Mr. Stannyhurst's and um, by Hugh Edwards. And the only reason this book is sort of sought after is because um, the original hardback and the paperback had an introduction by Ian Fleming. Um, and I believe the story is, um, it's basically a night of heavy, heavy gambling. And of course, uh, gambling does feature in the, uh, the James Bond books quite prominently. So that's why I guess uh, Fleming was invited to do uh, the introduction. It's one of those cases because it's got a, a bit of brand new Fleming writing. Um, people people want to get hold of it, and he didn't do that many. Let's be honest. So uh, it's uh, it's one to look out for for sure. Easily overlooked. Um, I don't think it was anything like a bestseller, but it's definitely one to have on your radar. Um, as I said, I've only ever had the one copy of this, and it's pretty scarce. Pretty scarce, that one. Now, next we've got You Only Live Twice. Um, so there's the, the movie jacket, and I've got some different printings of the book. Um, the first of this is in paperback, that is, is actually quite scarce. Um, so this one's got a, this one's got, this is the first edition, and it's got a not for sale in the UK. So I'm not, and it's laminated. So I'm not sure if this is one of those funny instances again where the original printings were possibly exported and um, then we've got a couple more here so i think these might just be different printings of it so yeah this is the second from 1966 and i would imagine this must be the third then because i wouldn't have doubled up yeah this is the third printing of six now after that i believe then came the movie adaption Ah, so this is the second printing, but it's been rebound with the movie jacket jacket on. So it's exactly the same book, but it's been trimmed. So you see all the copies of You Only Live Twice are ever so slightly shorter because it's the same book inside, but it's been rejacketed. And I believe some of the first editions potentially have got a, um, a wraparound jacket that's been popped on. So that's a variation that I've not got of You Only Live Twice, where... Um, the actual book has been um, has had a, a wraparound jacket put on to help it sell. Um, so they obviously didn't like the original Scorpion with the pearl cover there, although I really like it. Um, but if you ever find you only live twice as a movie adaption with with that as a detachable jacket, you found something quite special. And uh, once again, I wouldn't like to say the price on them, but. It's in the uh, it's in the hundreds. That's that's for certain. All right. So keep an eye out for that. Four three five then is Undine, Phyllis Brett Young, a bit Canadian author. Going to start a new pile over there. This is the X four three four. This is um, the movie time for Mole Flanders. Interestingly, it's got an introduction by Colin Wilson. There's Kim Novak playing Marl Flanders. Got to admit, I've never seen that adaption of it. I know it's been done a few times since, and uh, I hear the book as a classic. It's actually really good, uh, but it's not one that I've got around to. 444 then is A Crime of Honour. Giovanni Arpino. Look at that. Blade there. The harrowing second novel by the author of the novice. That also looks like a Francis uh, Phillips one, W. Francis Phillips. But once again, not not credited. But that's my suspicion there. Um, four four seven is my very very tatty. Don't look too hard of the six pound book of horror stories. It's a first, but it's the best copy I've got. Um, I've got a later one in my set of reading copies. But this is an absolute pig of a pig of a copy. Um, it's probably my one from when I was a kid, to be honest, because I collected these alongside the James Bond books. It's never really been tidied up, as you can see. Um, my reluctance to buy them, 
are better copies off eBay is just because at the moment, because the bookshops, these are really plentiful, all right? And these books had massive, massive print runs so that I know for a fact that they're out there and I don't need to be spending the £10 a copy, £10 each for a copy of these books off eBay to, f to have them in nice condition as first editions because I know that they're out there and it's just a matter of... Um, waiting for the bookshops to open again, and then we'll be able to go and uh, start finding these. And they're out there. They're, believe me, these pound book of horror stories are super, super common. So I'm not overly worried, um, but that is a, a very, very old tatty one, but at least it's there. Okay, so something far more important, uh, the pound book of girls' names, <laughs> X450. I guess it just gives the uh, the background to various girls' names. If you're having a baby, and wondering what to do. There was a companion book of boys' names as well. This is definitely a re-release of an earlier pan, uh, The Frogman. The original jacket was so much better. So yeah, this is a, this is a classic thing to look for. So those original printings in the 50s, then the new edition, 1965. So that means that it will be the first one with that particular X number, in this case X, 451. Oh, one thing we should have done, I just remembered um, when we were looking at your native twice, I meant to show you this, which was um, a little bookshop show card for your native twice. Really nice. And um, it's, it's sort of made of not thick card, but like cardboard. And I've just put this in it in like a big comic bag to protect it. But these would have been used in like shop displays or put in the shop window to let customers know that the new James Bond book was out. As I said, I do have another one for Thrilling Cities as well. So uh, really, really nice. Those are uh, very, very nice. and very pleased to have that. Next, then, we've got X454, which is another yet another John Creasy, third one this time. Um, Send Superintendent West. That makes me think that should be Send for Superintendent West, not Send Superintendent West, but it does seem a little bit unusual, that, doesn't it? Um, send, send him where? Where are they going to send Inspector West? We don't mind. Okay, 457 is another one of those Alfred Hitchcock anthologies. Um, there's a few of these in Pan. Um, they are what they are, I suppose. You know, generally stories with a twist a la Twilight Zone. Um, there's not many in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, six short stories and then like a, a little novella. I see one of them is by Evelyn Waugh, The Man Who Liked Dickens. That's not one I've read, but I don't mind Evelyn Waugh as an author. Oh, The Saint 459, a Leslie Charteris. Now, this is quite interesting. This is another photo cover, photo montage, with maybe the playing card has had the saint painted on. Then they've used a few other little, little elements there. That's quite interesting, isn't it? 1966, four short saint stories in that one, probably pulled from various uh, magazines, the Saint Mystery Magazine being one of them, I'm sure, and uh, a few others. Hammerhead, James Mayo, introducing Charles Hood. This is interesting, this feels like it's it's not laminated, but it's got a very, very shiny cover, which is a little interesting. I wonder what, what's going on there. Feels like the, the, the stock of the cover is really thick. Interesting. Quite a nice little jacket, that one as well. 461. 463 is The Dream Experts, edited by Frederick Poole, and it's sci-fi, science fiction stories by scientists. Oh, there we are. It includes Asimov. That's interesting, isn't it? So actual speculative science fiction by people who were scientists. Ah, oh, yeah, Fred Hoyle, I recognise. Obviously Asimov. And Frederick Poole doing the introduction. They're the only names I recognise. Okay, now. Ah, oh, now I should have got this one out as well. I've actually got a show card for this one as well. The Flight of the Phoenix. They must have been doing loads around this time. Um, this is uh, a film tie-in. So once again, I'll give. I'll pop in a picture. Um, I'll do it for the Thrilling Cities one. And the Flight of the Phoenix uh, show card that I've got as well. Once again, it's just a little card that was put into a bookshop window. And... Uh, 
I picked that one up quite recently and I was really pleased to get it as well. Really unusual. X471 then, Road to Volgograd, Alan Silito, author of Saturday Night and Sunday Morning in the Soviet Union. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot that uh, show card. Look at me. What am I like here? Give us this day, Sidney Stewart, one of the great true stories of World War II. Well, I don't remember it. I've read quite a bit of World War II fiction and non-fiction, and uh, that's why I don't remember at all. So disdained, and yet another Neville shoot. And it is quite an interesting time, this, this mid mid 60s sort of 19s these are all 1965 1966 and um obviously the highlight is uh you only live twice but i don't know it was a funny time for pan um generally sahib alan hunter i think they were in a real transition period and they um they started to lose their identity a little bit i think around this sort of time which is a shame um they're still interesting don't get me wrong there's still some st nice stuff in here, but it's just not quite the same as those early ones, is it? Um, this is another horror anthology edited by the prolific John Burke, Tales of an Unease. Let's have a little look at the uh, content, shall we? Yeah, just a few sort of stories with a twist again. A few names I recognise. Joan Fleming, Brian Aldis, John Christopher, Penelope Mortimer. Yeah, R.A. Right, Hall. So a few, a few big names in there. 483 is Dead Men Never. Dead Men Rise Up Never. Christopher Landon, author of Ice Cold in Alex. That's again quite an interesting sort of jacket, that one. That's a bit more abstract. Reminds me of some of the Penguin Crime books around this period actually look at 1966 now Rewatched the movie of this one uh, recently uh, the Cincinnati kid what a great film absolutely great great film look at that quote from Fleming there a poem of a book um, what a great movie this was absolutely riveting from start to finish I loved it it just looks so good what a great great looking film um, I've been very much into Steve McQueen lately and I've been listening to the Steve McQueen podcast, The Speeding Bullet. And in fact, I have interviewed the host of that show, uh, which will be in an up and coming video. So uh, you can look out for that one. 494 is drown proofing, the new survival technique that can keep you afloat. Christ, they've given a whole book on it. Well, we let 120 pages on not not drowning. Well, you know. If it helps someone not drown, that can only be a good thing. <laughs> Two more. We got Nicholas Montserrat, the story of Esther Costello. Who was Esther Costello? I don't know. But this is her story by Montserrat. And the last one we're going to look at today is another Montserrat. 498. So we had 497 and 498. A fair day's work. Not a hard day's work, a fair day's work. A crisply dramatised version of some of our present discontents. The Times Literary Supplement. Well, if that doesn't make you want to read it, I don't know what will. <laughs> and that is the last one we'll look at today. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that little look at these pan books. I'll have another 100, 150 or so finishing off the pan giants probably next month. So do look out for that. If you haven't already, do please hit that subscribe button. Do please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it today. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.